Welcome back to the channel. So this week, carrying on with our beginner's guide to armor building series, we've got um, 172nd this time. So we're kicking off with the Sherman Firefly 5C. Uh, this is the brand new tool from Airfix in 172nd scale. And we're going to go for uh, Belvedere here from uh, the 27th Armor Brigade. Um, Normandy vehicle, a lot of these Sh um, Sherman Fireflies, you know, sort of cut their teeth in Normandy. And um, the Firefly is renowned in its own right, but um, I mean, it gets compared to the Tiger and maybe it doesn't get um, the, the recognition it should. But you know, rest assured, this thing was a Tiger killer. Um, the gun was better than the 88. The tank was really better than the um, Tiger, if you look at it in the point of view of how many were in the field and how uh, able it was to be a fighting tank compared to the Tiger. Um, you know, you could argue that the armour wasn't there, but then, you know... But uh, then, you know, you could say that, uh, well, <laughs> there was a lot more coming on behind the uh, Sherman. You know, there wasn't very many Tigers backing up the Tigers, if that makes sense. So it's something that people debate all the time, but um, it, the Firefly is a very good tank so uh therefore it's it's one to uh one to certainly think about adding to the collection so what we've got here is uh as i say it's a brand new toolkit from airfix uh, there's a couple of things at play so already it's a different type of plastic um it's much more in line with other models really uh it's it's more of a harder plastic uh it's not so soft and um, it's nice to work with. Now, they've also, I think the idea behind these kits, uh, they've released a few kits in 172nd, uh, tanks and aircraft. I think it's to try and restart the starter range, if that makes sense, because a lot of their kits that are in that range, you know, the, the previous Sherman and Tiger are almost dating from the 60s, and they don't make for very good starter kits. Uh, so the engineering behind this is is meant to be easy for construction. So, uh, as you can see, things come together very quickly with very obvious mounting points. Uh, there's no problems, everything fits fine. So far, there is a couple issues as we go through down the line, uh, which I'll tell you about, but overall, everything's absolutely no problem. Now, this here, I'm just test fitting the top hole to the transmission cover. So, what I'm using that clamp for is to is to bring the transmission cover up to where the hole's going to join it. So that's all that's about. So that's the glue sets. Uh, now we've got the running gear. So as I mentioned in the review, you get a whole set of uh, pre-made running gear with the tracks already on it. So you can use that straight away, but it's not the right track for a, a Firefly. So uh, you've also got link and length tracks, which is what I'm doing here. And for that, you have to make up the running gear. So I'm just sanding off the uh, seam lines. And um, this is the correct track for this model. Um, if you want more details on that, have a look in the uh, review, which is linked below, uh, where I go into the details on, on the differences behind the tracks and um, and what you get. But as far as this build's concerned, we're going to use the length and length uh, option. So it's pretty good. It's, uh, it's a different way of going about it. Um, I, I've never had tracks like this. Um, and to make up the running gear, it's pretty se it's pretty simple. Um, you just join this part to the rear part of the bogey. You get a bit of a seam line on the top, but all that's fine. Now, if this was a larger scale, this would matter. But in this smaller scale, it doesn't matter. You can't really see any of this. So um, I, I clean up what I can where I can, but it's all hidden under the track. But if we were up to 135th scale, you know, you wouldn't want to see anything like this. Uh, so there is the bogies set up and levelled using a flat edge. Um, just making sure they're running how we want them, level to the ground. And that's one side. So they are sided. So then I've done the other side as well uh, separately. I clean them up. And they go on pretty well. There's a little bit of wiggle room as you join it on. Uh, so you want to watch that, but uh, generally, um, as long as you use the straight edge when all three are on and before the glue set, you can you can level them up easy enough. So this is one side of the track done, as you can see, all pretty good. Um, you can see the iconic track there with the uh, the raised sort of semicircle there, I guess it is, on the length, length on the link, 
and then we're going to do this side. So what we get is a top run, um, which goes into the sprocket. Now the sprocket actually has the edges of the track links. I forget what they're called for um, US armor, uh, but they've got. Um, it's not pins. It's it's like a it's a joining tooth. The 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 track tooth is on the edge of the track. Um, and then the link sits inside it and it joins the two links together, that tooth. Uh, so what we get is the links here, which sit inside the sprocket, and those teeth are already locked into the sprocket. Now I did need to cut off this top edge, as I've shown here. Uh, it was, it was, there was a bit of plastic going further back, which I left on the other side, and I managed to get it to all fit. But I noticed in the test fit of this side, uh, the top run locked into the sprocket much better and that's obviously what's meant to happen so there's, there's a piece of um, plastic on the edge of that track which I've cut there because it's already in this part which I'm joining up now uh, so they sort of moulded it on both sides and there you go you can see the join is is perfect it's exactly it just locks in whereas the other side it didn't really lock in it kind of floated but it got there in the end So I'm gluing them down to the uh, top of the running gear now, that, that top run. Uh, I want to glue that in. We fix it as we go around. Then we've got a few smaller sections which join on at the, the angle from the sprocket down to the first road wheel and from the last road wheel back up to the idler. As you can see there, that's a part going on. That just joins in there. So again, glue that up at the sprocket side and at the road wheel side, so it's all where we want it. Then you can put that top run, uh, the, sorry, the lower run, this bit, this long section, which has got a curved end to it, and that just links in there. Now, what is needed here and there is a little bit of clamping. Because of the glue, you've just got to just gotta kind of whittle away here and there and, and check your, your fit now and again, but it will come together, no problem. Um, and once it's on, glue it all down to the uh, road wheels. Uh, you can add a little bit of weight inside and turn it upside down so the road wheels are pressing down to it, and that can help. And then we've got the idler. So we've got a seam line there just in the middle of the uh, idler where the two parts of the wheel join. So I just get rid of that as best I can, but you can't really see it again in this scale. And then we've got this section. Now, for this... Uh, it's sort of springing up a little bit. So I actually glue it onto the idler, clamp it on there, then when it's dry that side, um, with force, I then bring it down to the track run on the road wheel, and I... Oh, sorry, the other way around. So um, I join it here and clamp it, and then once that was dry, I clamped it up to the uh, idler as well and glued it in. And that was simple enough. You can see I cut a little bit too much there, so you just want to check because there's a tiny little gap. Again, we're not going to notice it, but I tend to be a bit over the top of these things. And there we got the track run. So um, now it's on to the upper hole. So what we've got here is some holes to drill out for this uh, version. I'm thinking they might release a, um, a Sherman Mark V for the... Um, you know the British Mark V Sherman. I'm not sure because there's a lot. There's 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 got to be a reason not to drill these things out, um, and I think they could use this hole for a Mark V. Uh, so we'll have to see. So it wouldn't be the Firefly variant. It just have the normal turret because um, there are a, a couple of things that you don't need to do. So I, you, I'm when with Airfix they generally do this when you're going to get different boxing. So I'm certain we get something down the line based on this um, chassis. And these sprues. So we've got these uh, lifting hooks. Now, they don't look like they come through very well here, but rest assured, once you put some glue in there, if you push them, they slot right in and you can't see it. It's a seamless join. I just hadn't quite pushed it through enough there. It's a little bit stiff until the glue's there and then it melts it and it just it just pushes through then. So it's actually a very good fit. I was a bit worried at that point. Uh, then we've got all of the uh, parts to be brought together to bring the turret in line and then we've got a few small parts to add to the top of the hole as well so with the muzzle brake we've got very thin but not drilled out holes on the muzzle brake uh, which is simple to drill out and we do in um, in a moment 
but it's a two-part muzzle brake so we've just got to get that glued on make sure it's level and then sand that back it's it would be asking too much of airfix to mold that in one i think and it would probably ask for trouble if they did it so this is the best way out of that but we've got the single piece barrel which uh means we don't have to glue that together it's just a bit of a seam line to knock out on this muzzle brake it's alignment it's uh, the main point so we've got the spare tracks going on the front plate there a conic of the uh, uh firefly also got the uh travel lock for the barrel and the shovel going on which I uh, think it would have been better if they molded that in because they haven't quite got the finesse they've they've got quite nice tools all over molded in on the top hole but then that shovel's twice as big as any of them uh, and it kind of stands out a little bit but here we go can't have it all or can we uh, now on the mantlet uh, there's two little sections I've had to cut out here it's too much it doesn't fit it's too wide so you can see I've just taken a notch out of the top of that um, block which is is where you join it in and it just didn't fit it was just too much so uh, cutting that out was fine it wouldn't fit flush until we did that so just watch out for that as you if you're building this one then we can have the gun barrel movable it's all a bit thumbs and fingers here I'm afraid but it's rather small but there's this uh, section that just blocks that in. And then the gun barrel will move. It's a little bit tricky to glue up. I do that off camera, but that's that's what you do. Uh, then we've got the cupola going on. Very straightforward. Slots in with a, um, a fixed hole. Yeah, you, you, it's a squared off hole if that's is that is that a thing um i mean it's got an edge so you, you can only get it in the right way and then we've got the uh, one of the aerial mounts going on there as well i don't add the aerials to this or do although i do drill the holes out it would give it um an extra level of detail so something worth adding and we've got the lower section of the turret going on we've got this join running around the back which sands out easily uh, now this would have potentially have cast texture it would have weld seams but in this scale, I've elected to ignore all of that. I don't think we could do it in a way that would be in scale. I think it would just be too overpowering. Uh, so I've just decided not to do it in the first place. But you could, obviously, uh, just like your 135th stuff, you know, you can put your weld seams in and, and um, add as much as you like. Now, we've got this part of the sprue. So this is sprue D, and this is not mentioned in the instructions, although it is, sh it is shown before and after. So it, the instructions, it asks you to put this ball-mounted machine gun on in the front hole, front of the hole, um, and then the next stage has this plate welded onto it. Now, for the Firefly, this is correct. They got rid of the uh, gunner's position, and this was just filled with ammo. So they just blanked that off with a deflector so that it wouldn't be a, a um, shot trap. Uh, so you want to add that. It's in there. It's it's fine, and it's actually in the instructions. It's just not shown adding it. So, and again, something else to watch out for. Now, I wanted to add the light guards, which is a bit of an iconic thing for the Sherman. Every, part, every type of the Sherman has uh, these light guards, which are thin strips of metal around the lights guarding the lights uh, so just with a thin bit of um, plastic card that i've cut using a steel ruler i'm bending it around a spare needle from an old airbrush to get a kind of curved shape and then i just fix it onto the front plate around the light um, by gluing one side with super glue letting that set and then using that as the anchor point to bend it over into another blob of super glue and then fix it down there you see i've already done the one on the right hand side and that's what we're going for so once you've got your blob of super glue and you're ready to go you can just bend it down into it there might be other ways to do this uh, you could do it with sheet metal or strips of copper, anything like that. Uh, but this was the what seemed easiest to me. And then we get two um, 
two strips that, that join to the side and, and bring that onto the hole. And I just added those with uh, small strips of plastic card and using the tamper extra thin. Just to place it there. And it's more of a nod to it than being accurate. It just adds a little bit of finesse to the model, which I think pays off quite well. Um, and similarly, we do not have the tail lights nor the tail light guards. So for that, uh, the best way I could come up with, with making an attempt at the tail lights was to do some stretch, stretch, stretched sprue, and where it kind of. Uh, tapers to one end uh, that would give me the right shape so I just cut up a few little bits uh, that looked right and then when I was happy with the two pieces I then glue them to the hole just in a roundabout area where I think it would be and then in the same manner we make the uh, rear tail light guards which are similar uh, but they're this shape so you've got a loop and then one um, fixed piece going back to the hole now, this kit is, is basic, so uh, if you wanted to do a really good Firefly in 170 second scale, uh, buy the Dragon Kit. If you're not really fussed and you want to pick something up and try something a bit different and you're happy to build it out of the box, add a few details, but for it not to be particularly accurate, this is your kit. Um, the Dragon Kit will come with photo etch light guards, much more detail, um, any of the bits that are missing. And it's far superior. So this is not a contender to that, but it's not designed to be. Um, where it fills a hole in the in the market, I'm not sure. Uh, but it's a welcome addition. Um, the Tiger doesn't look very good at all. It's, just, it's the same old thing. Um, I haven't picked up the Tiger for the main reason. In the marking options, you've got Whitman's Tiger uh, 007, which was a steel wheel Tiger. And there's no steel wheels, so that's just... I just don't know why they even offered it. It's pointless. Um, or to give you the run of steel wheels as well. Why not? It wouldn't have been difficult to do. Um, so it looks a bit bit, bit iffy to me. I'm just showing you here where I've drilled out the muzzle brake using 0.8 and, and 1.2 drill bits. And that was simple enough. And just showing you where I've sanded up um, parts around the turret as well. And then we're going to add the door which I think is for uh, chucking out empty rounds. But I may be wrong, so let me know in the comments if that's not quite correct. But we'll add that in a moment. So yeah, the Tiger doesn't look very good to me, and the trouble is I know a lot about the Tiger, and I'm a little bit burnt by it, by knowing too much um, of what would be wrong. I'm not an expert on the Tiger, I just know with, with kits, you know, I know exactly what to look for. And looking at that one... Yeah, there look to be a few issues. Um, so I will be staying clear of that one. But it, 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 these two open open a scenario in the market where for a tenant you can pick these kits up. They're a lot more widely available, so you can't pop into any you know, of your local shops and pick up a um, Dragon uh, 172nd kit. But, you know, you can get them online and, and currently you can't go in shops anyway. So uh, something to think about on these. Um, just think about what you're after. Uh, from a model, if you want something basic, this is this is no problem. And the the decals are absolutely superb. Uh, just showing you there the uh, XF58, which is the olive green I've gone for, and I'm reasonably happy with that for a British tank green. I actually do like it. I think it looks just like um, the ones I see down at Bovington and all the different greens. It looks just like this. Uh, now, painting the tracks. I'm just using a uh, watered-down XF85, so that's rubber black, with my, um, you can see just off the top of the screen there, using a wet palette. If you want to know more information about that, there's a, a video in the link below showing you about making a wet palette that I've done before. So I'll leave you now just showing you me painting in these details, and then we're adding uh, add the decals on as well, which, like I said, are superb. And... Um, then we'll come back when we get ready for the weathering.
So uh, something I forgot to mention uh, is the stowage. So I just followed the instructions with the layout there. So you do get a whole sprue of stowage for the uh, front of the vehicle. So I just added that on as best I see saw fit, uh, which you can do yourself. Uh, and there's also one of the badges on the rear mudguard that I've put. It's actually showing this one here. It's showing to put up where that box is above it. So, you know, I didn't know what to do, really. So I just put it on the mudguard there. But um, uh, the decals are superb. This is over a gloss coat. So I did put a gloss coat on. And um, as well as the stowage, we also get the spare track links. So I'm just showing you where you can place them. I'm choosing not to. But there's plenty of photographs of fireflies with this these um, spare links of track welded onto the side of the whole side of the turret as extra armor so um by all means you know feel free to to add that on if you see fit and there we go the um the decaling's done we're in a gloss coat so i'm going to mat this one down and get straight on with the weathering now just showing you there another area you could put the uh the track armor so for the weathering when you look at these vehicles uh they're generally very very dusty uh, and that's kind of all that's going on. It's it's You can think about it, it's the middle of summer, Normandy, dusty roads, dusty tracks, that's what's happening. They're just getting covered and covered in dust, and then you get fuel stains cutting through that. So to replicate this, um, I'm just using two products. I've got um, AK's uh, Dust Effects, which is air-filled dust, so it's a very light dust colour. So that's giving me the wet side of this. Um, and then I'm using European Earth pigment from Ammo. Um, you wouldn't think these two products would be co compatible, would you? But you know, they're, they're okay. They behave themselves if you put them close to each other. Um, so what we're going to do is now, once that's wet and the enamel... It's basically just an enamel wash, a light enamel wash, and then I'm adding pigments to the enamel wash to bind it in there. And I'm not trying to make this muddy. It looks like it's being muddy at the minute. It's not. What the effect is that we get from the end of this is quite effective. So with that pigment in the brush, I'm just pulling the enamel wash up the side of the hole here and in and around the running gear uh, just to kind of initiate where I want to go with this. And then using the pigment, we're just pulling it all up again, pulling it up towards the rear, blending it out as we go to the front of the vehicle, just adding in some of this uh, Euro European dust pigment in and around the running gear towards the back, the side of the, um, behind the running gear, and in the track bed as well. Uh, and any gaps we can see where the paint's not gone, so we are actually covering up with weathering once for once. We're not starting clean. It's too small, really, to um, to do it. So this was the best way I could go about it, really. And then just pulling that up, as you can see, finger, brush, whatever, you start to get this nice effect, this dried-on dust effect, with a few sort of wet areas showing through, and... Um, it's really quite good. It does look like I'm plastering it on, but as the rest of this series has shown, um, I'm not. This is being placed, although it looks, because because it's sped up, it looks like I'm just plastering it on in places, but I'm, I'm adding it in areas where I know it's going to work, and then I'm using that as a pool to blend up. And now you can see the effect. I let that dry overnight, and once it had dried, I'm just going in now with neat thinners and just cutting back through it to give rain marks, cutting back through some areas where it doesn't look uh, natural and just trying to blend it back as you can see going back through and it starts to give rain streaks and it looks like the dust is kicked up the side and then the rain has run down the, the from the top of the hole and down the side of the hole and it gives this effect now you can go back in with different enamel washes and cut through with different colors i do add a few fuel stains here and there um, and i do put um, a dark it's a dark wash for dark yellow over the tool handles as well. Uh, and that brings the build to a finish. So as you can see, I've gone on with the dust around the front as well and around the back. Let it kick up and um, look quite natural. And there we go. I think this is overall uh, a really nice little project. It's been a nice build. It's been quick, uh, very uh, stress-free. Like I say, it's detailed enough for a quick build. Um, not perfect. But then again, you know, it's not trying to be. So I've got to bear that in mind. Just showing you the turret there that I just bring in and blend it in with it. So there we go. These are the pictures that I'll leave you with. So as always, thanks for staying tuned. Hopefully this is something a little bit different for some of the smaller scale armour. 
um, guys who watch the channel. Um, uh, I may well come back with some 172nd scale stuff later on in the series. And as I've mentioned all the way through, this is a series. So there's, uh, these videos are added to a playlist. Um, that's linked below. Uh, that's linked at the end of the video, sorry. So um, do save that playlist if you uh, want to stay tuned or go back and uh, find out any of the videos from this previous. Uh, so as always, thanks for watching. Um, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing uh, to the channel, liking the video. Uh, if you want to help out the channel, there's a couple links down below where you can do that. This series of videos is going up weekly. So next week we are staying with the loosely termed allied side and uh, we will be doing a T-34. So that's with the Soviet side. Very late at the end of uh, World War II, I'm going for a Manchurian one. So uh, August 1945, something a little bit different. So stay tuned for that and um, I'll, uh, I'll see you next week for the next video. And uh, once again, thanks for watching.